Hey folks, in this video tutorial, we are going to cover two topics. First, I'm going to teach you how to accurately test your Wi-Fi speeds, and then I'm going to teach you what you can do to help improve those speeds. That's coming up next on Tech Talk America. Hey folks, and welcome to the class. One of the things that always frustrates me personally as a consumer is when I'm paying a lot of money for a service and then I'm not getting what I'm paying for. And the best example of this is Wi-Fi. Most of us use devices that are connected wirelessly to the internet. And if you have not updated your wireless router in the last few years, you may very well discover by the end of this video that you're one of those people. In order to accurately test your Wi-Fi speeds, we need to know a key number, and that is the number that your modem is putting out. Now, since most of you who watch my videos are Mac users, obviously almost no Mac comes with a LAN connection. I recommend that you pick up something like this, and I'll give you a link to this one in the video description. It's simple, it's got USB Type-C on one end, yeah, it's got a couple of USB ports here, but most importantly, we have a LAN connection on the bottom. When you go to plug this into your modem, you will probably need to power cycle your modem first and then connect it directly to your laptop. So now that we have a hardline connection to the modem, the website that I recommend you use to test the internet speed is fast.com. I also recommend that you go to the app store and download the fast.com app on your iPhone, which we'll end up using once we get around to testing the Wi-Fi speeds around the property. Just to be clear, the reason why I recommend Fast.com over some of the other options is because Netflix actually owns it. And if your internet service provider is throttling your connection, they're definitely gonna do it when they see you connected to Netflix. Remember, the goal is to get an accurate reading, which is why you should never use the speed tests that are provided to you by your ISP. When I did this test connected directly to my modem, my download speed was 540 megabits per second. The other important number we need to write down is the upload speed, which you can get to by clicking here where it says more info. In my case, my upload speed was only 24 megabits per second. Now that we have established the upload and download speeds that your modem is capable of delivering, there is still one more piece of info that we need to know, and that is what generation of Wi-Fi is your current router using. I'm gonna show you how to do this on a Mac in just a moment. Unfortunately, you can't get to that number from an iPhone, but if you look at the bottom or back side of your router, you will probably find this information written on it somewhere. On your Mac, I want you to hold down the Option key on your keyboard when you click into the Wi-Fi settings at the top right. You will see a lot of info in this list, but the info that we want is here where it says PHY mode. All of you will see something that says 802.11. But the big question is what letter or letters come after that number? If yours says anything other than AX, keep watching this video because it might be time for you to upgrade your router. During the pandemic, a lot of families discovered that their upload speed was not sufficient enough to support multiple children all being on Zoom at the same time. To make your life just a little bit easier, I've created a simple free spreadsheet that you can download via a link in the video description. You can then open that document in either Excel or Numbers, and notice that there are two tabs at the top, so that way you can test each location when the network is active as well as when it's inactive. Here in this text box, you can write down the upload and download speeds when plugged directly into your modem. When you're testing the wireless signal in your home, you don't have to test it in every single room, but definitely test it in the rooms where you use your devices the most. And when you're testing in each of those locations, make sure you test it twice. Once when the network is quiet, and again when everyone is on their devices. And when you do test it when the network is active, make sure at least one or two people in the house are on something like a FaceTime or a Zoom call so that you can accurately test the upload speeds. If you discover that your router is not holding up, I wanna give you a few different recommendations. You'll find links to all of these in the video description and in the interest of full disclosure, yes, they are affiliate links, but think of it as a simple way of supporting my YouTube channel. This is not a sponsored video, so these are legit recommendations. Those three routers that I recommend are the Nest 6E Pro, the Eero 6E Pro, which is made by Amazon, and the TP-Link AXE 5400. All of these tend to run somewhere around $150 to $200, and they're all relatively easy to set up. This is a simple spreadsheet that I made to compare my old network to the new one that I just set up. 
The internet connection comes into a room called the media room. I'd like to point out that on the old network, the second it goes wireless, the 540 megabytes we started with has now dropped to 330. And keep in mind, this is the inactive network test. So this is without any other electronics using bandwidth. Let's now switch to the tab for the new network and see how things changed. Now it's almost showing the same connection on a wireless signal compared to being plugged in directly to the modem. Let's now go back to the old network and see how it held up when the network was active. As you can see here, even though the download numbers have dropped, they're still plentiful enough to avoid interruption. However, when we focus on the upload numbers, this is where we get into a problem. Like most people in the world, our upload speeds are significantly slower than our download speeds. So in my case, upgrading our Wi-Fi wasn't as much about increasing our download speeds as much as it was about preserving our upload speeds. And when we switch to the active test on the new network, the results speak for themselves. Purely out of my own curiosity, and if you're willing to play along, do me a favor and go to fast.com right now. And when you're done and you have those two numbers, the upload speed and the download speed, let me know what they were in the comments section. And don't forget to put the general location of where you live, even if it's just the city and state or country. And if you did decide to upgrade to a new router, let me know in the comments section which one you bought. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. This is David A. Cox with Tech Talk America. Class dismissed.